Hello, my name is John Clothier and I'm a wood turner. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. As you can probably tell, I specialise in adding lots of colour and gold leaf. This was made on my brand new Coronet Herald from Record Power, which is a fantastic lathe. As well as being a wood turner, I'm also a YouTuber. So if you're interested in finding out more about my projects, including a full review and breakdown of this lathe, and the reasons why I chose it, head over to my channel. You'll also find out more about the kind of work that I do and more projects like this. So, let's get on with it. So, on my Coronet Herald here, I have mounted a Sapedi blank, which is 12 inches by two inches, onto a faceplate. The first thing I need to do is to true it up. Once we've done that, we'll mark out a recess, carve the back, then we can get it into the chuck and start the carving. So that's the back of the bowl done. Um, obviously turned and sanded all the way to 320. I'm now going to use some methylated spirits or denatured alcohol just to clear out the grain and make sure that there's no residual dust. So with that clear, I'm going to apply some sanding sealer and this is a 50-50 mix of sanding sealer and thinners. With the sanding sealer now dried, I'm going to use some sanding paste just to give it a really nice finish. So after the sanding paste and make sure it's all clean, I'm going to apply some wax. Right, now let's turn it over and put it in the chuck. So now the back of the bowl is finished, flipped it around and put it into a chuck. All I want to do at this stage is just true up the front and make it nice and smooth. So we'll get it trued up and sanded. And I'll sand all the way this time down to 400 grit. So that's the front trued up and sanded. I actually went all the way down to 800 grit. I've also given it a blast with the airline to try and get rid of as much of the dust as I can. And now I'm just gonna give it a bit of a spray with some methylated spirits or denatured alcohol. And what we'll do now is wipe that off with a tissue. And you can see, even after having used the airline, there's still a lot of dust remaining. So that's completely cleared it all out now. So now that's all cleaned, and what we're gonna do is start to apply some color. And we do that with a paper tissue. Um, so just take your piece of tissue, fold it up, and form a nice tight pad. Then we can take our colours. Now I'm using four different colours here. You can just do this with one colour, but if you add a few extra colours in, it just helps to give some variance, which helps to make the whole thing have more, a little bit more depth. It just makes it just come alive a little bit more. So I'm gonna start, I've got a, a kind of a yellow colour here. So just spray a bit on the tissue. Now do this away from the piece. All I wanna do is just apply it. I'm doing this as a bit of a base coat first. Push outwards, and then you won't get any around the back. Okay, so now the whole thing is coated in a very thin uh, layer of the yellow. I'm gonna work up to the next color, which is a darker yellow. Now this time, I'm not gonna put the whole thing all over. I'm just gonna be a little bit more patchy about it. But what you want to try and do is to blend the two colors together. So you can't see a distinct line between where one color is and where the other color is. You can use the same tissue, and that's what I'm gonna do at the moment, but you can also use a fresh piece if you like. Now these colors that I'm using are a water-based color. Being water-based, it gives you that more time before they completely dry in order to blend them together, to so make life a lot easier for you. So now I'm gonna work up to my next color, which is a more of a red. Now 
Now I'm going to go on to my last colour, which is an even darker red. Now if you find there's any areas where you haven't quite managed to blend it together properly, all you need to do is just take your towel, you can take a dry clean one and just rub it, but if the colour started to dry a little bit too much, just spray a little bit of water on it like I have with this piece and then re-blend it. It's always worth standing back and having a look at the work when you've done it, because when you're up close it's a little bit hard to see what it actually looks like. Take a few steps back and you can look to see if you're happy with it. I think I'd like a little bit more of the red down the bottom here, so I'm just going to apply that. Now what we want to do is just leave that to dry for 10-20 minutes. Now just before I apply the sanding sealer now, I should have mentioned before, when you're doing any colouring like this, you really want to put some rubber gloves on. I use the nitrile gloves because they're powder free and they're very, very inexpensive. You will also want to put something on your lathe just to protect the bedways. I've got this piece of scrap OSB uh, and I find that it's just the right size to sit there and it just catches any of the colour and whatever you're going to put on it, just to make sure you maintain your lathe as best as possible. So right, now let's apply the sanding sealer. Now you can use a spray um, and if you use a spray, make sure you use a cellulose sanding sealer if you've used a water-based um, stain. I'm using a pre-thinned 50-50 cellulose sanding sealer. And just going to start in the lighter area and apply it in a clockwise rotation. And the reason why you want to start in the lightest area, as is you can see, it will pick up some of the colour and you want to spread the light into the dark rather than dark into light. So once your sanding seal is dry, I like to just take a, a Nyweb pad and just give it a light, and I mean very light, D-nib. So now for the next step, we're going to apply some gold leaf. Now this can sound quite daunting, but actually it's fairly straightforward. For the method we're going to use today, I've got a disposable artist palette. You don't need that. A piece of scrap paper or a plate, a paper plate would be fine. Anything that you can just put some of the gold glue on, which is called size, so that you can apply it with a sea sponge. So what I'm going to do first is I've got my size, um, which is basically a glue, and I'm just going to take my sea sponge, just dip it in the glue, and then push it onto the palette. And we're not going to need a lot. Now the reason we use a sea sponge, and it doesn't have to be real, it can be artificial, is because it's got a very rough texture. So when we spread the glue out, we'll see we get some randomness in the pattern. So what we're going to do now is just dab this all over. Now you don't want too much, you want to completely cover it, but you want to get a fair amount onto it. Now you need to leave that to dry. Now I use an acrylic size, and it's what I would recommend because with an acrylic size, you only need to leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once it gets to the tacky stage, it will actually remain tacky for a good 24 hours. If you use the more traditional oil-based size, then this can actually be several hours before it's even ready to apply. But I'm going to leave this about 20 minutes now. You want to wait until none of the white is left showing as white, and if you feel it with the back of your knuckle, it should feel a little bit like the back of sticky tape. That kind of, it's going to stick but not stick feeling. hope that makes sense. So we'll come back in about 20 minutes and we'll apply the gold leaf. So I've left it about 20 minutes and as you can see, there's no visible white left on the size. So we can start to apply the gold leaf. This technique does use quite a lot and a lot of it does go to waste. So you might want to look at the artificial gold, but of course, real gold will look so much nicer. So I've got my gold leaf here. And what I'm going to do 
is just pick it up one leaf at a time and just lightly touch it on. Don't press it on yet, just lightly touch it. Now that you've got the whole piece covered very loosely, you can use one of the pieces of backing paper just to press it down. You don't really want to use your fingers just yet, um, and you didn't want to do it before now, because if you get any of the size or glue onto your fingers, it becomes a whole mess. So I'm just pressing gently. So now we should have pretty good contact now. So I'm gonna take a little brush and just start to brush off and brush in the gold. Now with most of the excess removed, now the fun begins. I'm gonna take an airline and I'm gonna attack it. What's gonna happen is where there wasn't glue, it should come off, it should break away and come off and just leave it where there was the, the size behind it. So that's the gold leafing process finished with. Blasting it with the airline has left this wonderful random pattern and that's what we're looking for, with that color shown through from behind. What we need to do now is hollow out the bowl and I've marked out uh, a line with a pencil of where I want to take it. So I want to take it from here, cover it in. Once we've done that, obviously we'll sand that and we'll apply a good coat of wax to the whole thing and then let's have a look at how the finished piece. So that's the bowl hollowed out and it's been sanded, sanding sealer and of course sanding paste as well just to bring it up to that real good shine. And I've also applied sanding sealer over the gold leaf too. And just before applying the wax, just gonna add a final little step and that's just to add a ring on the outside and on the inside. Um, and I'm just gonna use this pointy uh, carbide tool for that. So what's left to do now is just apply a coat of wax. And there we have our finished bowl. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Why don't you give it a try yourself sometime? Bye for now.